Thank you very much for the invitation. It's the first time I've had the opportunity to come to the City Club before. And I think the way that we're going to do this today, uh, my colleagues here on the panel are going to talk to you about the pros and cons of growing Willamette Valley. And I want to give you a little bit of a perspective of how a legislature, legislator turns um, turns on to a bill like this. What, what would make someone that is primarily focused on education and human services list is their key priority for the legislative session to pass House Bill 2427 as it relates to Kamala forever. The compromise bill that came out, it's a five year period of time and during that time up to 500 acres of canola can be grown each year for the purposes of research. There were some individuals who were opposed to growing canola in the valley that voted no on the bill because they wanted that number to be zero instead of 500 even though the impact of defeating the bill would be the 2,500 acres that was approved by the ODA pool. So eventually the, the bill made it through the process, which is what we're talking about today. Hello everybody, I'm, uh, my name is Matt Crawford and I am the president of the Land Valley Oil Seed Producers Association. Um, not only that, not only that, um, I am an uh, owner and operator of a thousand acre farm um, west of Salem in the Perrydale area. And my family uh, homesteaded uh, back in the 1850s and 60s and uh, a large portion of our farm um, has been farmed by my family ever since. We don't have a lot of options to grow. There's different crops you can grow um, as a break crop, um, but we don't have anything, most, the vast majority of crops that we have that can be considered a vi viable rotation are not economically viable. So they make money one out every five years, they break even probably the other three, and we lose a little the fourth. And so it's pretty hard to convince farmers year after year after year to grow a crop that breaks even on average. So what we end up doing is having to use more chemicals to less and less results. And the only way you can break that is if you have a different type of crop that you can rotate back and forth. And that allows you to have completely different farming methods that helps to break pests and disease and weed problems, but it also allows you to use different chemicals and much less of them because uh, if you have a crop any of the brassicas or clovers. There's, there's the grassy plants, which I, I explained earlier, and then there's all the leafy plants or broadleaf plants. You're aware of hazelnuts and grass, all the things that were mentioned before, the berries. You don't really see the specialty seed crops because they are relatively small acreage. They're extremely high value. And the reason you don't see them is because they're so spread out. And they're spread out for a very good reason. Because if you don't spread them out, you don't really have anything to sell. But it really is a choice. The idea of coexistence uh, is a flawed idea. Because in a coexisting situation, all members of that coexistence have to feel the pain equally when things go awry. But in the situation that we're talking about, the specialty seed industry has everything to lose. Our reputation, our disease-free status, the isolation system that we've developed that has given this valley the reputation that it has. That system, by the way, was devised by seed growers. The state had nothing to do with it. 